abroad, having studied in England and Italy, and now I am a very humble Laosu. Being raised by my parents, both of them are English educated under the British. My father went to VI and my mother went King George V in Saraman. She is Guangdong, and my father is Fujian Ren, but I am a bit Fujian, I can't speak Fujian, because he can't speak Fujian, I can't speak Fujian. But because they can't speak Fujian, they sent me to a Chinese school, a government SRJKC, Clinton Earth in Kuala Lumpur. Very proud to say I was a basketball captain. And they sent me there to learn about my cultural roots, which was wonderful and painful. And I got good at math. So my father is currently lying in bed in hospital. He has two holes in his head after having brain surgery. But I'm pleased to say he is well and he wishes you a very long si fa tai. But on his behalf, I am not married so hong fa na lai. I will wait a few more years because I can't give hong fa getting paid as a teacher. Yesterday was my first time ever being in Sungai Bulo. First time near a prison in Malaysia, I'm glad to say. Um, also first time getting lost on the way to prison, driving myself alone in the dark. And also first time I had to get a lift from a completely random stranger who brought me to Sungai Bulo for a small fee. He was the Jaga, the Japan Hospital Sungai Bulo. He was a wonderful Malay man who was trying to earn an honest living as a jaga for a hospital. Being a very curious citizen of the world, I asked, because I do not feel teachers earn a very good pay here, and they should, because education is a thing the country really needs. And I asked him a very simple question. How much do you earn a month? No, before that I asked him, how many children do you have? He said, saya ada lima anak. Lima anak. Wow. And I said, okay, so how much do you earn as a, as a jaga? Because I don't know how much a jaga for a hospital under the government earns. He told me he's raising five children. One, two, three, four, five children with a salary of 1,600 ringgit. To me, that is just crazy. And I felt so bad that I gave him about five times the amount he asked me to because I felt so bad. And he took me to Sunai Bulo prison. Along the way, there was a huge traffic jam of cars lining up in front of petrol stations to save just a few cents because the oil prices has just now increased again. Malaysia is a prosperous, beautiful, multicultural country and we produce oil ourselves. Why can't we have oil at a cheaper price is the question I ask. Why does a country like Norway in Europe they have only produced oil for much less than Malaysia in the time. And my father, who is in hospital for now, has told me about 10 times, and I can't forget it because he told me 10 times, that if Norway stops producing oil today, the country of Norway can survive for at least seven generations with wonderful health care and wonderful education. Why in Malaysia, 
city schools with wonderful facilities and people are still taking their kids out of the government schools. Some are putting them in Chinese schools. Chinese schools, they try to remove vernacular Poasiao and the Tamil schools when they are probably the most best for discipline there. I hope you agree with me. Everyone in Malaysia, especially the Chinese, from the child boy cow seller to a teacher to the highest paying doctor, values their kids' education more than anything. They will earn so much money and make so much chocolate out just to send their kids over to the U.S. and tell them never to come back to Malaysia. Why? Honestly, when I was a kid, I was, I grew up abroad since I was 15. That was two years after my father went into politics. Up till then, I had a wonderful, I had a wonderful time with my father. He was always there. Why at 15 does he need to send his only child at 15 years old away? Is it because he doesn't have time for me? Is it because the education system is there? That, that's better. I know that those three Anwar, Ibrahim, Fatwan, Ilham here, and mostly Nur Isa because I teach her. I teach Nur Isa yoga. Because she's so stressed and she just needs some some relaxation sometimes. And I met her children, Safia and Harith, who are the cutest, most adorable little things running around I've ever seen. And it pains me to see them have to, have to live with a mother when they're not even, I don't know, how old are they? They are seven and five years old and their mother spends most of the time traveling the country doing what her father was supposed to do since he's in jail the last time and now he's in jail the same time. My father and Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim are both 68 years old. It's way past their retirement age. They should be playing golf and having fun and looking after their grandchildren. But they're still fighting the fight. They're still fighting our fight. And they're still fighting your fight. Do you think they can't go abroad and get successful jobs? But why is such a good doctor? I know you probably have to do any lecturing job in the world. But we are here. And I am here because I feel passionate about this country and it is ours. Don't let them think, tell you otherwise. And most of all, it is a huge influence for my grandfather, who is the most inspirational character. Although the only time I saw him and I remember him, he spent almost 10 years lying in the bed as a vegetable after two strokes. And it just scared me when my father went to the hospital and I had to feed him and I literally had tears in my eyes. Tan Sri Tan Sri Kun, um, he was Mr. Opposition. I did not know much about him other than when he was a young boy, his, grand, his father moved from China and he started out life living in Kajang, Auckland, Kajang. And he used to tap rubber. He used to be a rubber tapper before. He used to tap rubber before he went to school every morning, basically. One day, the knife goes into his eye and he becomes blind. A couple years down the line, that blind eye saves him during the World War II and he stops short of seeing all his friends get killed by the Japanese in front of his eyes. He survived. He was the only one that survived. Later on, after having his medical studies getting interrupted, he, he had to go back to study while my father and his elder brother were already born. My grandmother, Puan Sri Liu Fong Ying, was also a teacher. I definitely follow after her then. And she had to hold the fort and earn for the family. I hear that Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim and my father were good friends and they consulted each other and Tan Sri Tan Chi could actually advise
advised him to join Amlo because he knew it was not going to be in his lifetime, nor Anwar Ibrahim's healthy lifetime, that there was probably going to be a change. Amlo was too strong. It was built on good roots, but any